Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our midweek Bible study. Here it is, December the 30th, one more day in 2020. We pray and hope that 2021 is a little less eventful year, don't we? Uh, we're praying for you to have a blessed new year and a very, very prosperous and happy new year. Certainly we are. And thank you for your prayers for your pastor and his family. We need them. Uh, please continue to pray for all of us, always. Uh, we covet your prayers very, very much. Going to be uh, looking at a new Bible study today. Uh, well, a, a different <laughs> a different book in the Bible to study. Uh, First Thessalonians. And uh, we'll be uh, looking at this book, Lord willing, for a few weeks. And then we'll go right into Second Thessalonians. Wonderful, wonderful books of the Bible. Uh, from uh, the writings of the Apostle Paul. Uh, very deep teachings that all of us as Christians need to understand and know, and I hope you enjoy it very much. So if you have your Bible uh, with you there, we can open to 1 Thessalonians, and we'll begin with chapter 1. Chapter 1 will be kind of short today. It's uh, Paul's greeting, his salutation, and as we see in it, uh, it will be much like uh, many of his other greetings to the other churches in his letters. Uh, this one is a bit different because he has uh, uh, Timothy and, and Silas with him. And we'll see that very, very clearly here in a moment. Uh, but uh, we just uh, thank the Lord for you uh, for allowing us to continue to pastor at Lewis Fort Baptist Church. Thank you so much. And we love you and appreciate you so much. And again, we're praying for the, the greatest uh, new year that you and your family could have today. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 begins like this. Paul and Sylvanius, of course, that's another word for Silas, uh, and uh, Timotheus, of course, Timothy, uh, unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Certainly what a wonderful uh, opening that is. We sense Paul's love and affection for uh, the people there at Thessalonica, the Christians there in the, the church of Thessalonica. And we sense that. And we do see that he is not alone. Uh, we see that he is with Silas and Timothy. Actually, uh, what is unique about this, they had just returned from Thessalonica, from being with the church, of the Thessalonians to join with Paul. So now Paul gets a first-hand account of what's going on in the church uh, as he writes this letter uh, back to them because, of course, uh, Silas and Timothy have been there giving a report on what's going on in the church. Look at what verse 2 says after he hears their report. He says, We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. So Paul is very well pleased with what's going on there uh, with the Thessalonians, isn't he? And he makes this very clear right out of the gate, right in the opening remarks of his letter to them, that he's heard the good word of their work and what's going on there. And he's very appreciative of that and wants to commend them by uh, letting them know he's praying for them always without ceasing. And you know, as a pastor of a church, I should pray for you all or whoever's listening today may not be part of our church. Uh, if, if you're not going to church anywhere, we certainly invite you to Lewis Fork. But uh, as a pastor, I, one of my main things is to pray for you. Uh, it's... it's uh, uh, I think it's paramount that, that you all are prayed for by your pastor, and certainly we pray for one another at the church, and I think it's paramount that you pray for your pastor as well, always. And we see clearly the example that Paul sets uh, in these opening remarks to the church of Thessalonica there. Uh, knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God, uh, their salvation through, uh, uh, through faith in Christ, and, you know, you can get into a really big discussion about this word election. 
certainly I believe that we are creatures of free choice. I think if we go back uh, even into the garden, uh, we see that very clearly that God gave Adam and Eve the choice whether to obey him uh, or not, and uh, obviously uh, they disobeyed, and we've been in trouble ever since. So we are creatures of choice. Uh, we don't know the things that God knows. God certainly understands and knows who will receive him as Savior and who, who will not. He knows that. Uh, we are to live by faith. Uh, there's a lot of things that I cannot tell you I understand in Scripture uh, and the way things are in our world. Uh, I simply can't tell you why. Uh, when election comes up, the thing of election uh, comes up in Scripture, all I know is this. By faith, uh, through, well, let me, let me back up. By grace, God's free gift to humankind in that he sent Jesus Christ, his Son, into the world as a payment for our sins. By his grace, his goodness, his free gift, through faith, my faith, and trusting what God did in Jesus Christ and trusting Christ and calling upon his name uh, from my position as a sinner and I, and, and, and I desire in my heart to, to turn from my sins and repentance and receive Christ as Savior. Uh, through my faith, I believe in the death, burial, and resurrection. I believe in the atoning death on the cross of Christ. I believe in his resurrection uh, from the grave, giving him the authority uh, to, to forgive sin and to, uh, for, for me to have life everlasting in him. I believe that. That's all that really matters. That's what counts. Uh, it's for a person to call on the name of the Lord. So we won't get into that anymore in verse 4 there today. That's another, another sermon or sermons altogether. Verse 5. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost. I want to ask you a question. When you got saved, uh, how, how did that transpire? Well, First of all, you had to understand the plan of salvation. You had to hear the word of God. You had to hear about what I talked about a moment ago, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Therefore, you were given opportunity to receive or reject what you had heard. Now, in that, let me make this very, very clear. A lot of people, millions of people maybe, have heard about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. They've heard about it. But here's the key. The Holy Spirit of God must bring that word into a person's heart so that they believe, you see. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. It's the, it's the, the work that he does uh, in hearing of that word. It's the convicting power of the Holy Spirit that helps us to realize that we are sinners and we are separated from holy God and that he has made a way for us to come uh, back to him. And that is through faith in Jesus Christ. You see, the Holy Spirit does the work. We see that there very clearly in verse 5. Let me read it again. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, not by the preaching, not by the, the gospel message only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you uh, for your sake. What manner of men were they? Well, they were just saved people like everybody else. Uh, Silas and Timothy, Paul, of course, uh, they had to come to Christ just like anybody else. Uh, that's their testimony, and that's our testimony to other people that, you know, I've given, given this testimony there at church a lot of times. I was 14 years old, almost, in Bible school, and the preacher came in. He shared the gospel message, but I'm telling you, uh, there was much more to it than just hearing of the word, hearing that I was a sinner, hearing that Jesus died on the cross for me and arose the third day. There was much more to it than that. Now, it wasn't some spectacular 
a blink of flash of light or something like that. It was, it was the power of the Holy Spirit convicting me and showing me that I was separated from Holy God and I would not go to heaven uh, without opening my heart to his, to his sacrifice of Christ. And I had to, to do that. It was not about just hearing and knowing what the preacher was saying to me, but, but it was through the moving of the Spirit in my heart on the very inside of me, I knew that uh, the time was for me to receive Christ as Savior. That's what verse 5 is talking about there. Uh, it, uh, our preacher that, that shared the gospel with me that day was an ordinary man, just like any preacher is. He has to come uh, to God through faith in Christ just like anybody else, just like Paul is saying of him and Silas and Timothy here. We must understand that very clearly today. But it's the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the power of God that moves in the heart that it does the saving of the soul. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. Look at what that verse says there. You know, we've been talking about this some lately. Talking about joy. The Christmas season, it's a time of joy, or it should be. And you know, then we talk about on the flip side of that, that people are going through hardships, pain, suffering, the loss of a loved one. First Christmas, maybe this year, without, without a, a spouse or a child or or a very close family member that you love dearly. And you think, well, with all of that suffering and all of that, how in the world can a person experience joy? They just don't seem to mix. That is one of the great miracles of salvation. The, one of the greatest miracles of salvation. And that is that we as Christian people can still experience this joy in our souls even though we may be going through one of the darkest hours of our lives, through sickness or, or some health issue or a, the loss of a loved one or whatever, we still can experience joy. My friends, that joy does not come by our power. It comes by the power of the Holy Spirit living inside uh, the believer's body. He brings us that joy. He brings us the joy of assurance and of power, of a sound mind, uh, it's what the Bible tells us, and he gives us that. Therefore, we experience not our joy in the circumstances that we live in, but in his joy that he gives us so freely as his children with joy of the Holy Ghost. Verse 7, so that ye were examples or in samples, but that means examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to Godward is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. Isn't that amazing what a testimony these folks at Thessalonica had? Oh, that's what I want as my personal testimony, and I want as, as the, the testimony of Lewis Fort Baptist Church is to spread abroad the peace and joy that we have as Christian people, therefore drawing others to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. In our example, as these Thessalonians were examples of God's grace and his love, they, people knew that, they'd seen that, they'd heard that of them, uh, and they sounded it out, the word of the Lord. And that's what we must be busy about also. For they themselves, verse 9 says, show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you and how you turned to God from idols, that's repentance, how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. My friend, now what a testimony that is for us and a church. Uh, that's uh, the testimony we want, isn't it? To turn from sin and to turn to God so that our neighbors can see that and desire to have that joy that we have and that peace that we have. Can't explain it. Just know it's there. Experience it through the power of the Holy Spirit. We want others to have that same thing, don't we? In verse 10, and to wait for his son from heaven. Oh, we're waiting, aren't we? Certainly we are. 
whom he, uh, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. And that one day, my friend, that wrath is coming. But thank God this morning. <laughs> Almost makes me chuckle to think of who we are in Christ today. We are delivered from the wrath to come through faith in Christ. That in itself should bring great joy to our heart and soul today. Thank you so much for joining with us today. We appreciate it very, very much. Uh, we'll be looking at chapter 2 next week, Lord willing. Uh, take this first chapter back and, and reread it always. Don't leave it just on the preacher's pulpit or his desk or table or wherever he's teaching it. Always take that, reread it, restudy it. Ask God the Holy Spirit to reveal in you new truths, and he will. He is our master teacher of God's word. He will never say anything contrary to what we read in the Bible. Allow him to teach it to you. Until we speak again, God bless each of you. Uh, we're praying for you. Pray for us as well. See you.